Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. If I, I could have changed anything, I'd go back and I'd be born either male or female, not one wanting to be the other. You know, I really wouldn't care whether I was a man or a woman, just as long as I was happy. We're doing the right thing as far as he's concerned for you. Yes. Now, if you analyse your face, let's starting from the top down here. And what is it about your face or your hair uh, and going further down into the body that you feel marks you out as a man rather than a woman? Uh, male pattern baldness, for sure. Look at it. All right, so you've got, yeah. some, so you've got some normal, what we call normal temporal recession. Yeah. Okay. Go moving further down. Um, <coughs> the nose. The nose you feel is yeah. too strong. Too strong, too, strong, too, too straight, too, too thick. Too angular, too thick. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, eyes are way too deep, sir. Yeah, okay, well we can't do anything about that, but we can do something about the brows, yeah. yeah. That's a possibility. So in an order of importance, I mean, if you analyse yourself, you want to walk down the street dressed as a woman and you want people to glance at you and say, ah, there's nothing there that doesn't look right. Do you just want to be a normal, Yeah. I don't want to be noticed. You don't want to be I just noticed. want to walk down the street and, and not be noticed. Not be noticed. That's noticed. the ultimate. Thank you. The way I feel now, I am a girl. If they could give me a, a, a pill or an injection that would make my mind in sync with my body, that would probably be easier and a hell of a lot cheaper than changing the body to fit the mind. He's on the phone. Is he? Yeah, Hi. Julie, I should say, is on the phone. Hello, how are you? Welcome, come on in. Okay, Listen, and you're being attacked by a vicious dog. Yes, I know. Hi, Muttley. Where are you, Muttley? There you are. <coughs> I've had chromosome tests and things like that, and I have the XY chromosomes. And, and physically, I'm male. There's, there's nothing female about me physically in that way. Provera, which is progesterone. I take three of them a day, five milligrams. And this one is estrogen. I take six a day, two milligrams each. Right. And this one is just Andrica, which stops the production of male hormones and is really good for getting rid of body hair. I initially advertised for a gay person. A transgender was something quite different, especially somebody who was going to be straight. I don't know what it's like from Paul's point of view. Um, it's great. I couldn't be happier. It's, um, I, I never dreamed I'd get a, as good a house in Sydney and somewhere where Muttley's just in charge. We pay the bills, he's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was concerned, I, I have to admit, um, when I first got the phone call from uh, the chap at ShareSpace, and he said, I'm with this person, and I, I, I'm really um, impressed with him, and I think um, you do very well. However, uh, he left a message on the phone, so he said, however, I suggest that you call me back. And I did call this person back, and I said, well, it's not exactly what you've asked for. This is a chap who's going through a sex change. And I thought, oh, okay. And immediately all I could think of was Priscilla Queen of the Desert. And I was not quite prepared <laughs> to have somebody move into the house. Um, it wouldn't be too shocking to the neighborhood and completely upset my <laughs> equilibrium. So anybody who was going to move in here would almost have to fit in comfortably and without ever giving anything up themselves to fit into the neighborhood. He probably typifies what we would all consider um, a good, clean country boy. And uh, he's moved from Bathurst to a place like Sydney to get the operations going. It takes a lot of courage for him not to have tried to escape, uh, shall I say, within Oxford Street and live within that ghetto. You go for a walk. Come on. Yeah. Come on, boy. Come. Good boy. For the uh, sex reassignment surgery, the standards are that you have to live and work in your chosen gender for at least two years, and in that time you have to. Um, have psychiatric assessment and counselling by one psychiatrist and in the last six months of that two years you have to then have the, the same thing from either another psychiatrist or psychologist to um, get a second opinion on it and then they both have to agree that you're a suitable candidate for sex reassignment surgery or it just doesn't happen. I bought this car in 1984, so 17 or 18 years now I've had it. Um, I bought it new. But it's all starting to get a bit old and tired now and needs a fair bit of work done to it, which I'll do. And, um, and being a V8, I just want to make it run a little more efficiently so I can pretend I'm a greenie. Apart from that, what's wrong with a girl owning a hot V8? You know, it's got a really nice, gentle flowing exhaust. There's no sharp angles in it. Exhaust is just like makeup. The key to makeup is to look like you're not wearing any. The key to a good exhaust system for a car is to let the engine think there's not one. What I've found since I've been taking hormones that I've really lost a lot of strength, probably over half the strength that I originally had. And um, yeah, things like just lifting the gearbox in that. In the past, I've done it myself. And I had to get somebody to help me now because it's just too heavy. I still have the size in my muscles, but not the strength. So they go really soft, and there's just nothing happens when you go to lift things. Growing up in a country town, there were certain, you know, you, you had to be the traditional bloke and everything a bloke did, you know, if you were anything different from that, it was just unacceptable. It was a background of, you know, the men went out and worked on the farm and worked hard all day and 
you know, dinner had to be on the table at the time they walked in the door. I think back to when I was 18 or 20 or even 25, if you said to me, what do you think you'd be doing at age 37? I'd have said, well, I'd have uh, probably had myself 100, 150 acres of river flats in Bathurst, probably grown cauliflowers and been very successful and probably happily married with a family. in Bathurst. Um, it's not all mine, I'm only part owner of it. But yeah, initially when I first went to Sydney I thought I'd probably sell out of it. But after about six months in Sydney I realised how important it is to get away from the rat race and come up here and it's a perfect place to come and do absolutely nothing. I've told quite a lot of people and and the reactions haven't been a, as bad as I thought, but I think the test will be when they see me as a female, it's, it is very confronting to a lot of people. Um, and, you know, no one knows more than me how difficult it, difficult it is to adjust to it. Um, you know, the, the next few months for me when I go through transition, and that's not gonna be easy. Um, so I can't imagine it's gonna be easy for other people either. Um, you know, they, they probably don't understand it because they're not in my situation. Um, I certainly wouldn't understand it if it was somebody else, but... Look at the cracks in the legs. I need some moisturiser in them big time, don't I? Look at that. They need a, a good wax and a good moisturise. Not many shaves left, eh? No, thank God. So do you have much less hair now? Yeah, I have quite a bit less. I've had um, laser hair removal on my face a couple of times already. Right. And that's pretty much gotten rid of all the dark hair. But it doesn't get long grey or red hair, and I've got a fair bit of all of those. So right. More grey than anything. Seventy. The ideal for a woman is probably closer to about 55, 60. So if we can bring that forward to there, that's not a big step for you, okay? But more importantly, <clears throat> we have to bring the hairline down in the temple, probably some 25 or 30 millimeters. So a more feminine hairline actually goes like this. Is that there? Okay. I'm just going to raise your left brow, and if you have a look there, see a normal a female brow is normally arched, yeah. right? Usually the peak of the arch is about there. It's not. It's of course it's not there, but you can see there straight away on your face that this half, this part of your face, has a more soft feminine configuration than that there, where the brow is down, mm -hmm. the brow is heavy, the eye is deep and the bone is strong. Mm -hmm. We can change the, the um, configuration of the nose as well mm -hmm. and uh, make it slimmer, make it not so high in the, uh, in the bridge area, make the tip slimmer and turn the nose up slightly. Uh, again, because the angle of the face here, in your case, is about 90 degrees and for a woman, it's ideally about 75 degrees, somewhere like that, okay? 
So when did you first start associating your feelings of feeling different with wanting to be a woman? Um, it happened at, at quite an early age. Certainly by the time I was about seven, um, I was cross-dressing in my sister's clothes. And by then it, it was something, it, you know, all little kids dress up and stuff like that. But for me it had a very different feeling and, and a very good feeling. It, it just, it felt right. But I mean, most kids do dress up. Yeah, but I think it's just a game with them. For me, it was it was deadly serious. It was much more than a game. It looks like a, a serious attempt at a beard there, but not much results. <laughs> at this stage in life, I'd been cross-dressing then for at least 10 years. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I do remember on a number of occasions growing a beard and trying to be more manly and masculine, and I guess that you know, I, I felt that those physical things would have um, reassured me about being a bloke, but, you know, when I used to see myself in a mirror cross-dressed with a beard, I thought I looked bloody ridiculous. And, um, you know, I certainly thought then that it was just something I was going through and would grow out of it, and, you know, by the time I was into my 20s, it would be completely forgotten. But, um, yeah, it went the other way. It got worse as I got older. I've had a few girlfriends and um, the two that I did discuss it with were pretty much of the attitude, that's okay, you can cross-dress, do whatever you like as long as it's not in front of me. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's fine. But it, particularly in one case, it, it became a situation where I was living two lives and, you know, there was the life of Paul with her and then the other life of cross-dressing and being female and, you know, just... I couldn't do that, you know, it was almost a, a, a dishonesty thing, you know. I could not live two lives. When you were dealing with your cross-dressing, did you think you were gay at first? Did you think it was sexuality rather than gender, or was it...? No, I've, I've never had any tendencies to like men. Um, that's probably been a big issue for me um, with the sex change, because, you know, like, the, the rules are that girls like boys and boys like girls, well, you know, I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, I guess that's just, you know, wait and see. Growing up in Bathurst, the motor racing every October long weekend was, um, it was bigger than Christmas. You either supported Ford or Holden's, depending on what your father drove, and the only time the Ford and Holden kids would be friends is when they ganged up to bash up the Valiant kids. <laughs> touch anything but a Holden nowadays. And a V8, of course. So if it hasn't got eight cylinders, it's not worth the money you spend registering it. This looks like it's in the pits at Bathurst. That's me on the little motorbike, about to jump over someone that's from the crowd that slide down. Have a ride, Jack. I was a bit of a lost soul at the time. I wasn't working, so... Um, you know, I just decided to go and work for my brother on the race team. I used to take care of the fuel and the refuelling of the cars during the race and um, stuff like that. Trapped inside that guy there is Julia. But, you know, the, the smile and, and all of that there, I think, was, was very superficial. Underneath that, I was... I was a very, very sad and unhappy person. I was really struggling to hold it together at the time and, um, you know, I, I used to look forward to every race meeting because it'd, it'd get me away and it was a distraction against the whole issue and the whole problem. 
I think I was out to prove my own masculinity to myself. Although in the, in the later years, this dominated my life. I couldn't even go and watch car races without thinking, you know, I want to be one of the girls driving that Castrol Cougars car or something like that. <laughs> In the past with girlfriends, I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy the sex, it was quite good. But yeah, like really to, to enjoy the sex, I had to really get into this state of mind that um, I was the female partner and, and it was almost a role reversal happening in my mind. And if, if that didn't happen, well, sex just was, was nowhere. I, I couldn't even function or perform and, um, you know, let alone enjoy it. And, um, you know, that's why it was sex for me was always something I could take or leave. It was, you know, I always reckoned it was just highly overrated. I do have doubts, and the only way I'm going to find out is, is to go through the transition process and, and live as a female for a couple of years, and, and after that two or three year period, if I'm happy that it's the right thing to do, then I'm going to have sex reassignment surgery. If I'm not, then I have to rethink the whole thing and, and see where I'm going in life from there. But the thing I'm absolutely certain about is that I had to do something because I was on a downward spiral to suicide just because of not knowing. I'm having the balloon expander put into my scalp. I need to turn it up a little bit, Chris. Yeah, the Over a six week period, okay. it'll be injected with saline, yeah. which will make the scalp grow. Then that will, after six weeks, I'll, I'll be about an inch taller. So how was the last couple of days? How was the last two days? It's a lot just, of pain? Uh, just like a, a, a bad hangover. Mm -hmm. What about the drain? How yeah, much half was in the drain during the night? Half a cup. Mm -hmm. and, and hasn't been much more since, is that right? No. He's pumping me up, just like a tyre. <coughs> Tractor tyre, it's got water in it. Mm -hmm. This will bring you up to 20 and I think pretty much 400. Is that right, Pintrick again? Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, have you got that other sail in there for me, thanks? How does that feel? It's comfy. Yeah. You have it's comfy, isn't it? In three days' time, the scalp expander will be taken out, like surgically across there, and the hairline pulled forward, so I'm no longer male pattern baldness up the sides here, and also a bit of work on my lips, and then the liposuction on the old male love handles here, and all the rest of it, and then I will be drop dead gorgeous. kind of make up just to make you, you look healthy and walking out the door to not really look like you've got a face full of makeup. Exactly. Because that's, that's my favourite. Yeah. Otherwise that, that's what I need to learn because that's what I want on a daily basis. I mm. don't want to look like a you know bloody you know, Barbie doll or something. Yeah. Someone from, yeah. Barbie doll will get jealous. Mm -hmm. two hours every morning before work? No, I reckon you should be able to put on your own makeup in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Certainly the biggest step is the transition from when you go from living as a male to a female. 
So you know, so you just put it up on your cheekbone. Mm -hmm. It's you know your your presentation and and your behaviour and how you are that matters because people look at you and they say, okay, that's a woman's face. She's a woman. It's seven weeks since I had my um, surgery for the bring the hairline forward and nose job and stuff. So. Are you pleased yeah. with the way it's turned out? Yeah, so far. It's, it's not as dramatic and, and as big a change as I thought it would be. But maybe I expected something different to what the reality is. But see so it goes over the next few months. It takes up to 12 months for the nose job to settle down. So. All right. The outcomes that I think you want and the way I have interpreted them is to feminise you. When I see and talk to you, I see essentially a female but with some masculine characteristics and we want to neutralize those mas masculine characteristics so that the characteristics are very congruent with who you now are and the way you feel so from your personal perspective is there anything that you you'd say oh, i've got a big bum or you know i want to make my breasts look bigger or is it something that no, you obviously think you well, want help I, with I, I do need to lose weight around the stomach because that's that's probably my worst feature at the moment and yeah I can lose the weight it's just a matter of motivation I am going to change my name by deed pole but I haven't done that yet because I've been broke <laughs> costs 82 dollars <laughs> but um, yeah in the next few days I'll do that and then get on a driver's license and things changed over so make it all legal and proper Okay, there we go, Julia. Congratulations on your new car. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. I sure Happy will. Motoring. Yep. Happy motoring. And we'll see you from time to time, I hope, for service. So, do we need a burnout now? Huh? A burnout? Yeah. You're not going to do a burnout, are you? Why not? <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing a burnout. The reason I bought a new car is because my old car was getting tired and worn out, and it's not air conditioned, and it's V8, so it's cost me a fortune for petrol. But um, the reason I chose a Corolla over a SS Commodore is that I wanted a little girly car. Because that fits the image that I'm trying to portray and, and I want to be accepted as a woman. So what do you think the next 12 months will have in store for you? I don't know, but I certainly don't expect it to be easy. I think the next 12 months are probably going to be tougher than the last 12 months or two years. Those shoes I wore with that skirt with that pants. Oh. 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 That is shocking. <laughs> So I'm really glad you put that on because, Julia, I never want you to wear something like that again. Oh, yes, I like that, but excellent. Yeah, I like that very much. Suit. Good. Blouse, dress. Something like that would be excellent if you're going to wear tights. Okay. For as long as possible. Oh, yeah, oh. until I press the button again. Okay. So when you... I think I, my voice is about 117 hertz, and she thinks that I can quite easily raise that to about 150, which would be an acceptable level for a female voice of my age. Mm -hmm. If we were to characterise feminine speech, we would say that it's characterised by a higher pitch a more varied pitch range, a more varied intonation range across words and within words, 
articulation that is elongated but particularly precise and a resonance pattern that is slightly breathy and far more forward. So not resonating in the chest, but resonating in the oral cavity or the mouth. Okay, so is there anywhere else where you need extra time? Because there's more cadenzas and things like yeah. that. Yeah, down here, um, the, um, just the last bit there. Men basically have ability to actually flip over the voice um, to the falsetto range. A woman's larynx is basically about half the size of a man's larynx. And, um, and what you do is you basically stop half of it from vibrating so that the, the size of the larynx that vibrate would be approximately the same as a woman's. <laughs> Femininity and masculinity are social constructs. They vary across generations and within different cultural groups. It's quite different from being male or female. Male and female will always be standard. And to be a woman doesn't mean that you need to be feminine. To be a male doesn't mean that you need to be masculine, quite the obverse actually. And with the transsexual population, what we're trying to do is match a feminine individual with a feminine vocal style, not the characteristics of the general female population. Tell me a bit about what you've been doing in the last couple of weeks and remember to use lots of dynamic range, so lots of pitch variation, um, articulation and lots of forward resonance and remember your body language. <laughs> forward resonance, that's the one I have the trouble with. The last two weeks, what have I been doing? Um, I've been to Bathurst for four days, I think, three or four days. Been up there a lot lately, but yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, so just bummed about up there, caught up with a few friends, out to dinner with a couple. What else did we do? Last two weeks, other than that, it's, it's been pretty much work, 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 and yeah. When I transitioned from Paul to Julia, I organised it and planned it quite well. So I organised to transfer from Waverley Depot to Leichhardt Depot and at the same time transition. It was a really clean break. I finished at Waverley as Paul and I started at Leichhardt as Julia. I pick up my job sheet each day at work and it's, it's just got Julia written on it. Everybody at work knows me as Julia and that really rested very comfortably with me within a few days. So there's no regrets or anything? No, not at this stage, you know. I now have to live as Julia for two years and go through all the psychiatric stuff to be able to have um, sex reassignment surgery. Um, but yeah, until I've had that surgery, if there was ever a regret, I could just turn back and, and go back to the old life. But certainly no plans for that at the moment. I don't expect there to ever be. With people, you know, friends, family, and all that sort of stuff that have known me for a long time, it's, it's going to take them a long time to adjust and, you know, I can just give them time and hope that they can adjust. So have you been? Overworking, underpaid. You're always the way, isn't it? What are we doing? One shot of that. Sure. There's three there. I have one of those every ten days. Right. And the other one I have is Depo Relavira every six weeks. Yeah. yeah. So how long are you up for? Another week. Right. Yeah, driving a tractor. <laughs> Spin around. Oh, God. Don't, don't knock the microphone off. Don't even get to lie down. No. God. What was it? You heard me and I'll hurt you. Wasn't that the phrase? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's all right. You'll don't still have punch. your... 
you'll still have your balls for me to hurt you, though. How far down the process are you? I reckon I'm about two-thirds of the way there. That's 18 months ago, or 20 yeah, months ago it, now. Yeah. That's about two months ago. Yeah, the, the nose has come up better, hasn't it? Yeah. You've lost a lot in your face. The nose it's a transformation, isn't it? Mm. So yeah. you still got your dog, by the way? Yeah, the photos. Yeah. He's two and a bit years old now. That's right. Somebody rules the roost, don't they? Hi, Joanne. Go in. Sort of. Not at first she didn't just come over. So had you heard about it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. And I said, but it wouldn't make any difference to me. I said it'll still be old Paul to me, whatever. <laughs> oh, that was good on you. If you're happy, that's the main thing. The last few days have been good because I've just been basically just walking around town saying good day to people I haven't seen for two or three years. And had such a positive, friendly <laughs> response from them. I'm just absolutely blown away. I didn't think it would be that good. What, what did you think it would be like? I thought Bathurst was a real redneck town that would really not want someone like me in their town, but it's quite the opposite. Uh, it'd be 20 years or more. At least? Yeah. Probably 20, 25 years. So there's been yeah. a few changes in those 25 years? Yeah, he's got better more, looking more so, <laughs> More so to Julie than me. Yeah. He didn't have, these, didn't have these bits when I first met him. <laughs> he was extremely rough sort of a bloke. Used to swear in front of women and carry on something shocking. Now to turn around and become one, it's, it's a bit of a handful to deal with. Um, but I accept him for what it is. I say, just take it as it comes, as far as I'm concerned. I don't have any problems with it. Hi, Mick. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I've had a shit of a day today because, you know, I've been locked out. Yeah, so I'm moving out of the house. You know, all sorts of problems happening there. No one in the family's talking to me at the moment, and all of that sort of rubbish. So, um, yeah, so here I am in a bloody motel room, and it's just a hassle for me to even go there and, and you know, get my belongings at the moment. Don't you bloody hurt yourself, no, I'm not hurt yourself. Pretty lucky, because it isn't really that heavy. Something. Generally, I think um, he's accepted reasonably well, except for his immediate family, which have not accepted him at all in any way, reject him totally and banish him from family altogether, which she's, she's found very hard. There's been times, you know, when I've been dealing with all this bloody shit that's going on with family and, and stuff like that, I've, I've really just stopped and thought, God, is this all worth it? And not just the surgery, the whole thing. And it is, you know. The, the loss of my family has, has been a big blow. It's, it's been a big loss to me. But it's not too great a loss for the happiness that I now enjoy. Um, I would never, never go back to how I was. I can't see any true blondes here. There's me. My brows keep your way, girl. <laughs> no, my eyebrows have always been darker. I, I, when I'm in the sun, I do go really blonde. I'm a 73 year old. And she's an old petrol head who loves restoring cars. Ground up restoration. That's right, yeah, that was, that was your business. Fitting and turning and 
everything else here. I haven't fully transitioned, I'm still transitioning. I've got no intention of going all the way, but I am on hormones and uh, it's working pretty well for me. The place that I live now, there's 53 flats and I get along exceptionally well with everyone. The women want to see what I'm dressed like when I'm going out and the blokes will come over and have a yarn and cups of coffee and we talk cars and all sorts of things and they just treat me as normal. But you go outside the city centres to the suburbs and places and you're very much in fear of your life. You might be doing really well but you stuff up once, just the one time, you know, let it slip or, you know, gang of views or something, cotton's on that you're a tranny and, and you're gone. You're born with it, you do your best to live with it. Yeah. I believe you are born with it. If, if it's something that you learned, I believe if you can learn something, you can unlearn it, like a habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, this is, is not, not unlearnable. Learn. There is no way. First See? time I ever got dressed up in any sort of clothes, I was four year old. That's right. It was That's me, it was the other half of me that had to come out and it came out. Mm. Eventually, it took 40, 50 years to do it. But it was there, right from the start. In the majority of cases, it costs you everything. It, it's cost me, my family. Mm. It's cost you, your wife and your kids and mm. your family, yep. pretty much. Mm. Um, why would you choose that if you had another choice, if there was another way? I've never had them plucked before, only fixed. It's more painful. It's always more painful when someone else does it. I can't be bothered doing it myself. Well, these are the things you're gonna have to learn to do. And all the nerves are coming back now, and I've, I've got about 80% feeling back now. Oh, I've ruined my hair. No, no, don't worry oh, about it, darling. I don't forgot about it. It's, it's hair. hair. It's a movable substance, mm. so that's fine, you know. I'm going to give you this one, mm. because I think this is a great colour for you. Kick her out of the way. Sorry. No, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Girls should always get prezzies. Mm -hmm. Especially if that's chocolates or fast cars. No, no, you don't want chocolates anymore, do you? No, fast cars. Fast cars. Mm. And a gorgeous hunk to go in the fast car. As long as he's, you... in, he's in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to turn you straight, is it? No. You'll be tapping on my bedroom door in the middle of the night. <laughs> It'll be you'll get jealous. Memo. So what do you think? I like it. It's good. One of the things that I found really difficult was I thought I would have to give up my interest in tractors and racing cars and learn to paint porcelain dolls or something like that. I really thought that everything from the past would have to be gotten rid of and adopt a whole new personality and new life. And the further I go through this and the more I think about it, the more I think, well, why should I get rid of the things from my life that I enjoyed so much? When you get on the accelerator late, you get to the chequered flag light. If you brake a little bit earlier, you get off the brakes a little bit earlier, you get back on the gas a bit earlier, and you get to the chequered flag earlier, and you manage your time better. You tell that to people, they go, no, nah, no, nah, let's reinvent the wheel. So you don't want to fall asleep. You snooze, you lose. You know that saying? Look at David going, oh, shit, man, jump leads on your testes. We'll get you pumped up, you'll be looking good. There's a lot of discipline today and a lot of fun. Hey, Steve, straight ahead. 62.37. That's 70.37. 70.37. 70 70.37, now have a look at this. He probably freaked out. Well, it's too late. They didn't nominate. This is only a practice session. You should have turned the bastard round for it. <laughs> oh, well spoken by you. Turn the bastard round. You don't hold back, Julia. <laughs> Can I get the flag out? He wants to see it. Here we go, coming up. I'll make a suggestion. That looks like a really sort of like very effeminate flag wave. He's pull the flag in. <laughs> okay, now we're going to have a pit stop now so you can put the watch down. We need you working, Julia. You're not just here to be a pretty face. Get your ass over there. Right. Okay, put off the brake. Okay, first gear, away you go. Listen. Come on. Oh, lovely. 
What a gear change. Go, Julia. Time? 56 1 2. Big jump. Another five seconds. I think Julia's turning into a race driver. I've never seen a bus driver that can drive that well. <laughs> Right, here she goes. Okay. Get the watch. Woo! Time, what have we got? 54, 1, 2. Great effort, yes. Hey, hey! Take your glasses off, I'll look at your eyes for a second. Get the helmet off. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great hairdo you've got there yeah. at the moment. It's just been fucked, look. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you reckon? Got Fairly, a couple of times got a bit loose over there. I heard it coming out of Sutton's corner with the tail. Got a bit of wheel spin. Got a little aggressive, maybe. I didn't hear that. Didn't you? Well, we could hear it from here. <laughs> I did do the quickest lap, which is 49.7. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I've never driven around this track before, so I've had 25 laps of the track, and I pulled out the quickest time of the day. Total bonus points, 320. Julia! Whoa! When you receive a trophy here, you must look across through here and say a couple of words. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one word. Thanks, Luffy, and I've forgotten your name. Bozo. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I'll be back. I've had the best time of my life today. I call myself a woman. But you've always felt you were a woman. I always felt I was a woman. I'm now very comfortable with it. You want to talk a bit about um, sex and partners and what, you know, mm. what's been happening there or what? Nothing. What about the future? Yeah, you, you have an appetite for sex, but it's sex with guys, not sex with women. Um, to have sex with a man as a woman, I think, would be just wonderful. Is there anything you miss from Paul that you've had to let go of? No. My biggest fear with the transition was that I would forget and one day walk into a male public toilet dressed as a female. And it never did happen. And it's 12 months now since I transitioned and I'm really comfortable and right into living as Julia and living as a female. And I think the transition period now for me is basically over. You know, the, the last step I've got now is SRS and um, yeah, you know, I hope in the next six months or so that that'll happen. Um, six to nine months or something like that. When you said to think of something that makes my eyes sparkle, I thought of Muttley. I knew you were. I was going to say, just think of Muttley and you'll be right. Yeah. Within myself, I just... I'm at peace. I'm now who I wanted to be and I'm accepted by society. It's good to be at peace. I lived under a rock and, and lived a lie and hid and did everything I could for 36 years. Now it's up front, this is me. I hope you like it, but if you don't, well, okay, I can get on with life anyway. <laughs>